Gauravani Prachari Nini Rasisa Sunyavari Pasyatya Day Satari Day. Panchakalpa Thru Vischa Pita Sindhu Bhavicha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasati Gaur Vakarindu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 So <laughs> we will decide we pick another verse or another section of verses. This is from the second canto, first chapter, first step in God realization. Tasmad Bharata. Sarvatma Bhagavam Ishvara Hari Strotavya Kirtitavya Scha Smritasya Chaitata Vayam Maharaj Parikshit is speaking to Sukadeva Goswami is speaking to Maharaj Parikshit. O descendant of King Bharat, one who desires to be free from all miseries must hear about, glorify, and remember the personality of Godhead, who is the super soul, the controller, and the savior from all miseries. O descendant of King Bart, one who desires to be free from all miseries, must hear about, glorify, and also remember the personality of Godhead, who is the super soul, the controller, and the savior from all miseries. Mm -hmm. Read a little bit from the purport. The previous verse, Sukadeva Goswami has described how the foolish materialistically attached men are wasting their valuable time in, in the improvement of material conditions of life by sleeping, indulging in sex life, developing economic conditions, and maintaining a band of relatives who are to be vanquished in the air of oblivion. Being engaged in all these materialistic activities, the living soul entangles himself in the cycle of the laws of the fruit of actions. This entails the chain of birth and death in the 8,400,000 species of life, aquatics, the vegetables, the reptiles, the birds, the beasts, the uncivilized man, and then again, the human form, which is a chance of getting out of the cycle of food of action. Therefore, if one desires freedom from this vicious cycle, then one must cease to act as a karmi or enjoy of the results of one's work, good or bad. One should not do anything, either good or bad, on his own account. One must execute everything on behalf of the Supreme Lord, the ultimate proprietor of everything that be. This process of doing work is recommended in the Bhagavad Gita 927. Also, where instruction is given for working <coughs> and the Lord's account. Therefore, one should first of all hear about the Lord. <coughs> when one has perfectly and scrutinizingly heard, one must glorify his acts and deeds. Thus, it will become possible to remember constantly the transcendental nature of the Lord. Hearing about and glorifying the Lord are identical with the transcendental nature of the Lord. 
And by doing so, one will always be in the association of the Lord. This brings freedom from all sorts of fear. The Lord is the Paramatma Super Soul present in the hearts of all living beings. And thus, by the above hearing and glorifying process, the Lord invites the association of everyone in his creation. This process of hearing about and glorifying the Lord is applicable for everyone, whoever he may be, and will lead one to the ultimate success in everything in which one may be engaged in providence. There are many classes of human beings, the food workers, the empiric philosophers, the mystic yogis, and ultimately the unalloyed devotees. For all of them, one the one and same process is applicable for achieving the desire of success. Everyone wants to be free from all kinds of fear, and everyone wants the fullest extent of happiness in life. The perfect process for achieving this here and now is recommended in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is uttered by the great authority, Srila Sukadeva Goswami. By hearing about and glorifying the Lord, all a person's activities become molded in spiritual activities, and thus all conceptions of material miseries become completely vanquished. Mm. Mm. I'll read the next verse. I'm not going to read the purple. The highest perfection of human life, achieved either by complete knowledge of matter and spirit, by practice of mystic powers, or by perfect discharge of occupational duty, is to remember the personality of Godhead at the end of the life. Ante Narayanam Shriti. Ante Narayana Shriti. So this verse gives, it's right to the point, the material world is full of miseries. Miseries of birth, we don't remember that misery, but maybe our mother does. And for a mother, we understand giving birth is not an easy thing. Sometimes there is tremendous amount of difficulty in bringing a child into the world at least on the physical level. And of course, what the child has to go through while sitting in the womb for nine months and undergoing a very difficult situation, being packed up in this little sack, which is completely devoid of any air. How can you live in there? Well, well, if I mentions that only by the mercy of the Lord is the child able to live in that situation. Otherwise, it's nothing, no living entity can live there, at no, least no human anyway. But somehow, by the arrangement of the Lord, he can live in that situation, but it's not a nice situation, being squashed up, bent over, having to be subjected to a lot of suffering, especially when the mother eats the wrong thing, and the child also feels some pain, Women can sometimes testify that the child is moving around while, the, while he's being carried in, in the womb. This also indicates the child is feeling discomfort. So there's a lot of suffering that comes with birth. And when the child comes out, sometimes he doesn't even come out breathing. They have to put him on some kind of machine to get him to breathe or slap him on the butt so he can breathe. But birth is not an easy thing. It's, it's quite difficult both for the child and for the mother. And then we have old age. When you're old, you can't function like you used to. The machine is not up to standard. The hearing goes, the vision goes, Walking sometimes goes, and uh, memory goes, strength is leaving. So old age is 
is, a, is another form of suffering, which one cannot avoid unless they die before then. And that's another misery, death. Death is the ultimate misery because whatever we live for is all finished in one flash when death comes along, completely removes you from your present situation. So now people are dying regularly every day with diseases, but it's always been like that. Uh, the birth rate is every, every two minutes, about three people are born into the world. And about every, I don't know, I forgot. Uh, every so many seconds, a child is born into the world. So birth is happening all the time. And death is taking its toll. Yeah, this is a miserable place. We're making so much arrangements to mitigate, to lessen the sufferings that come with these things. And you get diseased. You can't perform your activities nicely. You have to spend so much money on medicines, other kinds of health care. Health care is one of the biggest industries in the world, especially today. Millions and billions of dollars are put into just keeping people healthy. <laughs> so it's a nice, it's, these are miseries that are built into this material existence. But it says here, one who desires to be free from all miseries, that's the word he says all, must hear about and glorify and also remember the personality of Godhead. So this is the formula. Uh, of course, the goal of this is not to be free from miseries, but to awaken our loving relationship with the Lord. Because by hearing and chanting about the Lord, we learn about the Lord. We get attracted to the Lord. We get purified through the process of hearing and chanting. And we get a desire to serve the Lord. All that comes through the process of Shravan and Kirtan. And here it adds smartum also, our glorification and remembering smartum is, is uh, remembering the Lord also. So when hearing and chanting becomes intensified, smartum starts to manifest. And as is explained in the Shastras, smartum goes through five stages from remembrance. To, uh, from contemplation to remembrance, all the way up to uh, absorption. And then absorption uh, of meditation. From meditation comes samadhi. So the memory, the memory process goes through stages like that as we increase our hearing and chanting of the Lord. So this is the process. And what's the result? One can go home back to Godhead and achieve the ultimate principle of happiness and eternal life, which is the birthright of all living entities. As it says in the Shastras, and to go back home back to Godhead is your birthright. Because if you simply stay, just like it says, if you stay in the family, and your family is rich, your parents are wealthy, simply by becoming the, uh, the good child of the parents, you inherit whatever they have. So in the same way, our inheritance is the spiritual world. If we simply stay chaste to the process of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, we automatically inherit the spiritual world. So this is the process for becoming happy and as Prabhupada said, free from all fear. And material world means bayam. There's abayam. Srila Prabhupada's name was abai. Bayam means fear, abai means without fear. So baya is there and it's explained from the highest planet in the, in the material world down to the lowest. The living entities are always in a fearful condition. We have the example of even the king of heaven, uh, Indra. He's always afraid someone's going to take his post. 
therefore he reacts. When he doesn't get his worship, he becomes angry. So, yeah. So even we have the, uh, you know, the higher you go, you find there are also many planets and demigods and sages who are living on higher planets, but they also have fear of death. <coughs> Excuse me. And so fear is always there. Fear is an element of material existence. And what's the ultimate fear? Well, fear that I'm going to die. Everyone's going to die. That's just a matter of, you know, time. As long as you have a material body that's born, you lose it, and then ultimately the body dies. You don't die, but, be think, but people die because they think they're the body, and therefore, because they think there's something else in the, than who they actually are, they experience things that are contrary to their actual constitutional nature. They don't die, but they think they die, and they're fearful of losing their material body. And of course, people are fearful of losing their material life because they're attached to their families, friends, relatives, and people in general, their position, their money. Prabhupada says, you see the old man, he's dying, and he's giving instructions to the family. You take care of this, and you make this investment, and you uh, you do this, and you do that. And he's still giving instructions, you know, but he's not going to be around to see any of it. <laughs> instead of where, instead of making plans for bringing in the proper consciousness, he's still attached to the position he's about to lose. So this is the what we say the pitiable situation of material existence. People can't realize that everything in this world is temporary, but we are not temporary, we are eternal. And therefore, we have to engage in eternal occupation. And that's what goes on in the spiritual world. The spiritual world is everyone is remembering Krishna, serving Krishna, glorifying Krishna, and making arrangements for Krishna to, uh, to associate with Krishna, to be with Krishna, to please Krishna. And so, in the spiritual world, everything is ananda chinmaya ras. It is completely pure, <laughs> full of knowledge, and always unlimitedly happy. Here, we get a little happiness. We think, oh, life is so nice. But then what is this little bit of happiness you get? Which is something, this is explained that if you're hungry, that's suffering. If you eat, you counteract your suffering with some, some food. You get some pleasure from eating, but the counteraction of the hunger is called happiness. <laughs> you feel lusty, and that lust is bothering your mind, so you try to enjoy, to satisfy that lust, you get some relief from it, and then you think, oh, that's happiness. This is, this is the nature of this world. It's, uh, it's geared to such a way that happiness is simply a counteracting of the miserable conditions of having a material body and being in a material existence. But here, so this place is full of miseries. It's Sarvatma, I mean, not Sarvatma, it's Sarva. It's, what's the word, miseries? Dukalayam, Sarva Dukkha. It's full of suffering. <laughs> That's all it is, one suffering after another. You're tired, you go to sleep, and so you try to counteract the feeling of tiredness by sleeping. You get up, you feel rested, you think, oh, I'm happy. Well, what did you do? You just counteracted the, just the, the desire or the feeling of tiredness. That's all. So this is material world. When we understand that, then this verse really makes complete uh, what we say, we want to cling on to this verse because freeing ourselves from material miseries is given here as the formulas. Hear about Krishna, glorify Krishna, remember Krishna. These three things, by remembering, by glorifying, we remember, and by hearing, we help, it helps us to glorify. So we just finished one week of uh, Shastra, uh, Shravanam, 
glorifying the Shastras, the importance of hearing about Krishna through reading Srila Prabhupada's books. So um, that was direct. And fortunately, around the world, many people are continuing because of that inspiration they received about the intensification of hearing about the Lord through reading about it the Lord and reading about the process of pure devotional service as given by the Lord through his pure representative, Srila Prabhupada. So the process is really easy. What the problem is, we don't have any time. We always sit, say, no time. I only, have, I only have time for my material needs. I gotta do this, I gotta go here, I gotta take care of this. I got to make this money. I got to, you know, so uh, our lives are just full of trying to maintain this body and the extensions of the body in terms of the family members. Here it says here, um, what is the foolish materialist does? He's in, trying to improve his life by wasting time, sleeping, sex life, uh, developing economics and maintaining a band of relatives. Who are, who are to be vanquished in the air of oblivion. He can't save himself, nor can he save his relatives, but he thinks he does. And therefore he makes all kinds of economic arrangements to try to, you know, fortify this life that he's living. Economic arrangements means to, uh, is to simply depend on Krishna, that's all. When you depend on Krishna, Krishna, uh, gives you the intelligence or even takes care of you directly on how to live in order to fulfill your basic needs and therefore spend uh, quality time, as it says here, to hear about, glorify, and remember the personality of Godhead. This goes right to the heart. It awakens our, our attachment to Krishna. It inspires us. Uh, we pick up a book on Krishna's pastimes, Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, or any of the incarnations, their particular pastimes. We hear about, we read about, we get absorbed. We actually start to understand the nature of the Supreme Lord, whose nature is impossible to understand unless he makes his understanding available to us. But he does through the scriptures, through the words of the pure saints who represent him. So we have uh, so much uh, uh, available to counteract the suffering that comes with this material world. And when you're hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, you'll forget your suffering. It's like that. Sometimes uh, there was one example of, this is an ISKCON story, where two leaders in our movement, both persons who were temple presidents in two different temples, they had some personal problem with each other, and so they weren't talking to each other for whatever reason. And so, one day there was a kirtan and people came from different places to, to attend the kirtan. And so both of these gentlemen came and the kirtan was going on. So as the kirtan was, one, one was standing on one side of the room and the other was standing on the other side because they didn't want to be near each other <laughs> for whatever reason. So the kirtan got going and then devotees started to dance and the dancing started to become enthusiastic and everybody was into the dancing. So both of them were dancing. One was dancing on one side of a circle. They had made a big circle and the other one was dancing on the other side of the circle. And so one senior devotee, he knew the situation between them. So he decided to uh, enact some little uh, pastime. So he, start, he started to dance with one of them. He pulled one of them in and started personally dancing with him. And then he danced in such a way as he danced towards the direction of the other person. And then 
the, th the three of them were pretty close together, and then he pulled the other one in, and, and then the three of them were dancing together. <laughs> and then he left, and the two of them were dancing with each other. <laughs> so, <laughs> and they forgot about their enmity towards each other, and they just started to dance with each other, and they were smiling. So this is Krishna consciousness that it solves not only the problems of physical miseries, but, but mental sufferings also due to whatever problems we may find ourselves in. So hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord is so wonderful. We want to do more of that because our temples are somewhat in a restrictive mode now. Have a little kirtan in your own home. Invite the relatives, friends, and maybe some devotees, and uh, have kirtan, and then distribute some simple prasadam, and uh, or have a little program and talk about Krishna like that. And by doing this in association with devotees, life becomes what we say happy automatically because Krishna becomes the center. When Krishna is the center, all of us who are trying to be the center can't be the center, we're still, we're still trying to be the center. We push ourselves out of the center and we put Krishna in the center and then everyone becomes satisfied. So this verse is very nice. Tasmad Bharata Sarvatma Bhagavan Ishvara Hari Strotavya Kirtitavyas Cha Smartavyas Chaitata Vayam Oh, descendant of Bart. He doesn't call him Maharaj Pariksit. He calls him descendant of King Bart. King Bart was the ruler of the world. The word Bart, uh, the, the word, the term Bart Varsya is the place or the island of Bart, which was the name of this planet at one time. Oh, descendant of King Bart, he glorifies him. One who desires to be free from all miseries must hear about, glorify, and also remember the personality of Godhead, who is the super soul, the controller, and the savior from all miseries. So here's the formula for getting out of the suffering of the material world and getting back to Krishna in loving devotional service. So Sukadev Goswami, he is the authority. He is a personality who, had, who is self-realized. He's completely beyond the body. He knows he is a pure spirit soul. He's also an eternal associate of Shimati Radharani in another form. And uh, he appears in this particular Leela in order to uh, teach the message of Srimad Bhagavatam to the whole world. And Bhagavatam is about Shravanam Kirtanam Krishna Smarnam, to hear and chant and to remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead in loving devotional service. Okay, so any comments or questions? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Anuradha here. Please accept hey. my humble obeisances. I'd like to share Prabhupada. Um, I will not make a um, um, I'd say video because I'm I'm uh, afraid that I will um, the contact will be cut off. So I will just speak. Um, I want I'm just so inspired by this story um, about these two leaders who are in the um, um, conflict because then you can see that process really works I mean that um, that Krishna really can connect uh, devotees and also living entities, entities to each other like from uh, um, um, chanting the holy name and um, singing together like this uh, actually bring people together even if they have 
really like serious problems or conflicts. Um, that's mm. how to say all souls. I mean, all, all the souls are part and parcels of Krishna. And that's why they can be connected by the Holy <laughs> Name together. That's so nice story about um, yeah. all these. Yeah. And they actually, they actually forgot about their enmity to buy it from each other. And after that, they became, they became friends. <laughs> yeah. The holy name. Yeah. When you're in Kirtan, you, the whole, the whole material world stops. <laughs> mm. Always we need to add Krishna, ne? like like Prabhupada said, uh, number one in front of zeros. Ne? That nothing is worthy without Krishna. Nothing have a value. Ne? Like whatever you do, you need to add Krishna. Ne? Yeah, yeah. Krishna is the one. The zeros are material qualifications. And Krishna is the one. And Krishna is always available by Lord Chaitanya's kindness and mercy through the chanting of the Holy Name. Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Goranga. Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hey Krishna. Well, when will you come? You're still coming on the 19th? Oh, um, I wrote to you. Um, they canceled my flight again. So, are you still planning to come? Yes. When I hope they will open the airport because now, um, again, the number of people inc uh, increased uh, the coronavirus. So, I, I asked for flight, but they canceled it now. So you again, can come over. Time. You can come over land through trains, maybe. Oh, yeah. Trains run throughout Europe. <laughs> uh, okay, I will try. Yeah, think about it. Okay. You can get a good train and uh, come, it'll take you maybe less than a day to get here. Mm -hmm. I will ask. Belgium has good train systems. Yes. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Um, I was just wondering, you, <clears throat> you mentioned the example of uh, uh, giving birth and uh, that uh, it is great suffer for both the mother and the child. Because, and, there's, lo there's, because there's love there, it, the mother can carry through it. But otherwise, if there wasn't any love, it's... It's pretty, it's, it's a very difficult experience. I've talked to many women and many women have accounted, you know, it's, they don't usually speak about it much, but it's the situation where, you know, sometimes even women die of childbirth. In fact, in the United States, that's the number three reason how people die, women die at childbirth for whatever reason. So it's it's not an easy thing, <laughs> at least for both the mother and the child. But because the mother loves the child and she's willing to go through whatever to bring that soul into the world, she can uh, somehow or other tolerate the difficulties. Uh, uh, and. Is it this love uh, part why the uh, people in general think that uh, uh, birth is, is such a nice thing? Because amongst these four types of sufferings, 
the other three is everybody accepts that uh, that is suffering but somehow this uh, birth it's considered uh, to be such a nice thing and such an intimate thing uh, and is it because this uh, love is there or the, there is some kind of other reason well, the, the idea of bringing a child into the world is considered by from the material perspective a happy occasion it expands the family it brings another another brings joy to the family like that but uh but the whole process of giving birth is not easy mm -hmm. both for the child and and the mother says in the fourth canto of srimad bhagavatam that for some souls who are in the womb, not all, from some chosen souls, particularly those who are pious, uh, the Lord removes the covering of material energy while they're in the womb, and the Lord and that child in the womb can see his previous birth and also understand his particular situation. Therefore, he prays to the Lord, my dear Lord, when I come out, I'm going to be your servant in this life. <laughs> Uh, so that's there. So this is a this is a special feature of the Lord's mercy upon certain souls who are a little bit advanced spiritually. It gives them a chance to see. But then again, when they come out, they they're surrounded by relatives and friends, and they forget. <laughs> yeah. It's it's so interesting because. Uh, I remember I, I've uh, heard a class from uh, uh, Urmila Mataji, and uh, she spoke about, uh, <clears throat> uh, well, the class was about uh, sexuality, but uh, there was a part when uh, she spoke about that uh, there are other ways also uh, to, to take birth, like, like um, from uh, yogya, fire, or there are different uh, type of yeah, uh, yeah. ways in Bhagavatam. I mean, it's Vishwamitra Ming Muni brought a man in by, from a tree, like just like a, a fruit grows on the tree. So by his mystic power, he was able to bring his soul into this world through a tree. Mm -hmm. Rishi, Rishi Shringa was born from a deer Oh, wow. But that's, a, that's a, an interesting story also, how that happened. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Usually, you know, a species will come from this, the exact species, but there are different occasions where uh, even a human will come from another species or from another situation. But that's a, that's very rare. It's not it's not even like unusual. It's it's unusual, but it's extremely rare, of course. Yeah, probably, especially in Kali Yuga. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but uh, for me, it was just so uh, interesting that even uh, in this regard, there is uh, such variety. Uh, how amazing uh, uh, Krishna's creation is. Uh, yeah, it's this, this material energy is very, how we say, mutable. It's always changeable. Mm -hmm. Material energy can be changed to work in different ways. It can be changed by the Lord. Or it can change, it can, the Lord can change how it works or even a powerful yogi can make material energy work in a different way. Yeah, Prabhupada talks about how the yogis, they take bath in one holy place and they submerge themselves in the water and they come up in another holy place, which is 1,000 miles away. Within a few moments. <laughs> flying through the air. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada said every, every human being has the ability to fly. You just have to know how to develop that art. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's useful when there are no air, airplanes. <laughs> the airplanes are just some mechanical uh, 
albatross that flies through the air making all kinds of noise. <laughs> if you want to go from one place to another, if you know the if you know the the mantras, you can go on mantra also. Mm -hmm. You can, if you want to spend some time trying to perfect that, you can do it. Then, <laughs> I, I probably yeah. stick to the Maha Mantra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Prabhupada, Prabhupada appeared into one place and he was met by a re reporter. This was in America. So, um, he was talking, the reporter was asking questions. And Prabhupada happened to say something. He said, there's three ways you can fly. Yantra, mantra, and pigeon. Yantra, mantra, and pigeon. Yantra is machine. Mantra is through chanting of mantras. And there's a thing called kopita. It's mentioned in the Bhagavatam. You can train pigeons to carry you. Oh, wow. <laughs> so when he said that to the reporter, she said to him, well, how come? Uh, why did you choose TWA Airlines? <laughs> and Prabhupada said, to be one with you. <laughs> In other words, I could relate to you. <laughs> oh, oh, I understand. <laughs> If I came in by mantra, you might have <laughs> <laughs> Srila Prabhupada had such, such a great sense of humor. <laughs> oh, tremendous sense of humor. You read his books too, you can you'll see. This morning he was giving a class, I was listening, and I was laughing so hard I couldn't stop. <laughs> how he defines material nature in relationship to the conditioned souls. <laughs> it's really quite, it's ridiculous, but it's also humorous. <laughs> could, could, you, could you tell it? Because now it seems so interesting. <laughs> no, nah, you don't want to hear it. <laughs> I, can, I can give you the reference. It's a morning walk conversation. Uh, December 15th, 1973, Los Angeles. If you don't want to listen to the whole thing, you can read the text. <laughs> yeah, okay, I, I will search it. Thank you very much. December 15th, mm -hmm. 1973. In fact, there's a whole series of morning walks. Every day when Prabhupada was in Los Angeles, the whole month of December, every day he did a morning walk conversation. Almost almost an hour every day. He get, really gets in some two amazing discussions. And the devotees are right there with him, just discussing, discussing, discussing. It's really intense discussions on a lot of points. But this one I refer to is the December 15th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Please all glory to Sri Prabhupada and all glory to your holiness. Mm. Um, I yeah. think that um, this question of fear that we come into this material world and everybody's afraid and yeah, video, I think that yesterday in class your video is not your, your, your video is advanced in a, uh, Nimesha am I breaking up Hare Krishna, uh, yes, Maharaj. I'll just turn the video off for Mataji. Yeah, so she can just speak. Yeah. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, go over down, Leela. Um. Begin again. So you were talking about the fear and. You know, especially the old aging process side, it's not functioning. 
Maybe I should take off the video, Guru Maharaj? It's already Maybe. off. Uh, I'm trying to turn it off, but I'm not being able to. Yes, it's better if you can do it, Mataji, yourself, please. Hare Krishna, Govardhana, Lila, Mataji, you've turned the audio off. The video seems still on. If you could turn it other way around, please. You are now on mute. Okay. If you can just turn your video off, Mataji, please. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I can hear you. You can hear me, Guru Maharaj? Okay. Yeah, um, turn your video off. Okay. I'm going to try to get back in there and turn it off. Okay, is that better? Yeah. Yes, it's better. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this idea of fear... And we were, in our class, we were talking about as we um, advance in our Krishna consciousness, the fear begins to dissipate as we get closer and closer to love of God. And uh, we were reading these verses, and I felt like I was reading the Old Testament. Prabhupada, in, um, in this explanation of devotional service, he's saying out of fear of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the wind blows. Out of fear of him, the sun shines. Out of fear of him, the rain pours forth showers. And out of fear of him, the host of heavenly bodies shed their luster. And then it goes on for a couple of fear. And I'm just wondering if you could elaborate on that, why um, Prabhupada, why it is out of fear that the wind blows. Is it it's that just, we're the, the material? This, is, this verse, these verses are just giving the majesty of the Lord. That's all. That's all it is. It's not the it's not the intimate loving of the Lord. It's the majesty, the all powerful feature of God. Okay, I guess that's simple enough. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. I, I yeah, it it. Um, because, you know, I was always taught when I was younger, out of fear, of, you have to fear the Lord. And I don't fear uh, Krishna, you know. So when I saw that fear, well, fear out of the fact that he's the greatest of the greatest, the cause of all causes, yes, obviously, uh, that we can never be as much as he is. Um, but, we have to go beyond that. We have to go beyond that fear mood into the mood of devotion. Yes. For those who are disobedient to him, he is the fear aspect. He creates obedience in, in those who are disobedient through his majesty. But for his devotee, he's the, the sweet beautiful boy of Vrindavan. Okay. Krishna can be, he can, be, he, can pre, he, he can present himself in so many different ways. But for the devotee, the devotee doesn't have fear of the Lord. They have love for the Lord. Or at least they have a desire to please the Lord. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj. There is one comment um, by Sri Devi Dasi on the chat. And uh, Mataji has suggested, she said that Guru Maharaj, this very, ni this very nice verse brings out the point. If you want me to read the um, verse, I can read the translation of that, uh, uh, Maharaj. Yeah. It is, it is from Srimad Bhagavatam 4.30.35. So I'll just go on that and I'll read that, Maharaj. So Srimad Bhagavatam 4, uh, Canto 4, Chapter 30, Verse 35. The translation, whenever pure topics of the transcendental world are discussed, 
the members of the audience forget all kinds of material hankering, at least for the time being. Not only that, but they are no longer envious of uh, one another, nor do they suffer from the anxiety of fear. Yeah, that's a great verse. I remember that. We've, we've spoken on that verse many times. And in the verse, it quotes one, another verse. Uh, I can't remember the Sanskrit, but the Lord says, um, I'm not within the hearts of the yogis. I'm not with, I'm not in this, I'm not in Vaikuntha. If you're looking for me in the hearts of the yogis, you won't find me. You won't find me in Vaikuntha. If you want to find me, you can find me wherever my glory, devotees are congregating together, glorifying me. It's a beautiful verse. And what Krishna is saying is he's in the heart of his yogis. That's true. He's in everyone's heart. He's in the spiritual world. That's also true. But he says he's not. Why? Because he wants to say that if you want to associate with him, here's where he is. When we hear and chant his glories, then we can associate with him directly. Beautiful verse. I love that verse. Uh, and the purport is very, very clear in giving the understanding of what the verse is saying. And the enmity or envy or whatever, uh, once one is absorbed in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, people forget about their differences of opinion or whatever else. because this glorification is on the spiritual platform. Okay. So, okay, anything else? Thank you, Sri Devi, for that one. That was a good one. Thank you for reminding me of that verse. That's a beautiful verse to to to, to discuss. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. That's a truly beautiful verse, and I shared it with my father. So I was remembering as he was speaking about those two sannyasis and how they forgot everything. I thought I'll just uh, share it with everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Two temple presidents. Okay, we'll see each other again tomorrow. Tomorrow's the codice. Oh, uh, who's doing the Zoom tomorrow? Um, I'll just look up Maharaj and let you know. I'm not sure tomorrow. Um, Is it Lavanya? Try, try to find out whoever's doing it because tomorrow I'm giving class at the temple. And my class will definitely run over time and into this particular class. So like we did last week, I think you were here last week when I was late. I'm going yes. to be late. I'm going to be late again for tomorrow's class. So uh, whoever's the host should keep the, you know, read something or speak something in order to, um, Pick up that energy until we can begin officially. Okay, Maharaj. Uh, it's Lavanya Mataji tomorrow, so I will send her a message and let her know. Oh, there, there be a Mataji. <laughs> yeah, so, so you got the message, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll be a little late tomorrow. It's just natural. On Sunday, the Sunday class is starts an hour before this class and sometimes goes over yes Guru Maharaj. so what do you want me to uh, read uh, Guru Maharaj or uh, speak about? you guys choose <laughs> we're going to leave it you guys are going to be the okay. preachers <laughs> yes Guru Maharaj I'll think about it yes. yeah I'm sure you'll come up with something interesting 
Thank you, Guru. Hari Hari. Okay, so I should go. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, which, ver which is the verse you were talking about that Krishna is in the devotee's heart? Um, I think you misunderstood. He says, I'm not in the hearts of my devotees. I am not in Vaikuntha. I'm only, I'm there wherever my devotees are chanting my glories. That's what he's saying. But he also says, I'm in the hearts of the devotees. 1, 2, 17. Srinvata Swakata Krishna Purnishravana Kirtanaha Ridanto Sapadrani Vidyanoti Surit Sitam. That's another uh, important verse. Okay, Krishna is in everyone's heart. Every living entity is accompanied by the Lord constantly. And if we, if we always remember that, then we're, we're never in a, you know, what we say, a situation where we are alone. <laughs> we're always with God all the time. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Glories to Shiva Prabhupada. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. 